Good morning, church. Let's praise our God who gives us joy this morning. worship in this holiday season. Yeah. 
there be peace. Come on, that's all we ask. Let there be
Alpha and Omega. Oh, yes, he is. You are our risen Savior. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We behold you. We behold you. Come on, can we respond this morning? Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord. Respond with that as we close. Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Oh, we sing. Bow down before. you God hallelujah and we thank you Jesus for such a beautiful morning to come before you in your wonderful presence my God hallelujah thank you for your son Jesus Christ thank you for giving him us to save us Lord Jesus we love you father and we come before you in the beautiful precious peaceful name of Jesus hallelujah thank you Lord amen family thank you so much for joining us today if this is your first time joining us welcome we're so glad you're here and if you've been around for a while welcome back if you could take a quick second and fill out the connect card on our gt church app or by clicking the link below that's a great way to make sure we have your most updated contact information so you don't miss any important announcements or information for those parents joining us today we want to say thank you for all you're doing right now we know that it isn't easy, and as your church, we want to help you the best way we can. Make sure you visit GT Kids and GT Student Ministries websites. There's a ton of resources, not just for your kids, but for parents as well. We are so excited to be hosting our annual Jingle Jam event today at 2, 4, and 6 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. Take a break from the stresses of the holiday season and spend some time having fun with your kids. There's going to be music, crazy games, and a message just right for this time of year. We hope you'll join us for this Christmas extravaganza for the whole family. for some peace or longing for some hope, we hope you'll take time to stop by our Simply Peace Light Experience here in West Lawn. Available every night at 6 p.m., you'll drive through a winter wonderland of lights, enjoy Christmas music along the way, and be encouraged through the telling of the Christmas story, one that is so full of so much hope. Sometimes, another way to experience some hope and peace is by giving back to others. This Christmas season, we are collecting gift cards for teens in the foster care system through the Children's Home of Reading. If you would like to spread some joy and take part in this donation, but weren't able to drop off a gift card this weekend, you can text the word GIFT followed by the amount you wish to donate to the number on the screen. We think of Christmas as a time of warmth, 
love and family gatherings, but this year might look and feel very different. The stress and the chaos that exist all around us during this season can hinder us from remembering the true reason that we celebrate at Christmas. It's not about all of the external trappings that may not be able to look the same this year, but it's about what God did for us by sending his son. Joy, peace, and love are still present in the world and available to us through Jesus. This year, our Christmas experience is going to look a little different, but we are excited to tell the Christmas story in a new way. Join us this Wednesday and Thursday at 2, 4, and 6 p.m. on GT Live and Facebook for our Christmas special, Home for the Holidays. We're praying it helps you take some time at home with your family to put aside the stress, the hustle and bustle of this year and season while receiving a message that will bring peace to your soul. For everything we have going on this Christmas season, including more information about Christmas services this week, check out Christmas at GT.com and join us in prayer that these efforts bring light and joy, ending the year with hope. All our giving is a response to the gift we've received in Jesus, and this season reminds us of that more than any other. Thanks to your generous and continued giving, we're able to do events like Jingle Jam and prepare kits for families to participate from home. We were able to give families Advent wreath supplies as we all prepare and wait to celebrate the day of Jesus' birth, which is the greatest gift for everyone. Thank you for continuing to support this mission. Let's pray. Thank you so much for bringing us hope this season. God, I thank you so much that we have that hope that can be in our hearts and in our homes, Lord, and that we can have the greatest gift of all this season. God, I pray that you would open our hearts to what we can give. God, I pray that we would invite you into, into our giving, God, that you would direct our giving, Lord, no matter how much we can give. I pray that we would just give from our heart, God. I pray that you would bless it, God, to further your ministry and to further your mission for our church and for this world, Lord Jesus, in your name, amen. Good morning, Glad Tidings. We're so glad that you're here this morning, and I hope you enjoyed the worship time, and uh, what a great time of the year, always a great time to worship the Lord Jesus Christ, and we're glad that wherever you're watching this this morning, that you're with us, invite people to join you, but our prayer this Christmas at GT is that you truly know the peace of God that only Jesus Christ can bring, and uh, in a moment, we're going to go to God's Word, we're in a great series on Simply Peace, and uh, Patrick Scott shared a great word last week, and I've been so looking forward to this morning. We're going to get that in a second, but I wanted to share one quick upcoming announcement. We're so thrilled that in 2021, November 29th to December 8th of 2021, uh, we'll be taking another Times of Refreshing Israel tour, and uh, anyone that's going on these tours will tell you it is truly the trip of a lifetime that we will literally go and go and we will walk where Jesus has walked. And so we want you to come pray about this. And, uh, and uh, after the first of the year, uh, the January 1st on our website, uh, hubbardministries.org, uh, you can email me and, uh, or, or give me a phone call to the church and all of a sudden get in touch with me. But on the website especially, you'll find all the information and that we only have 118 spots, but 150 people have already signed up wanting information to register. It'll be strictly a first come, first serve deal. And so after January 1st, you'll get all the information on our website, or you can call me, uh, email me, and uh, you'll get all the information on the two of the cost. And now uh, you can register to secure your seat for an Israel tour the end of 2021. I hope you can come and be with us. I, I want to go to God's word this morning. And, and again, with the whole message about peace, I want to talk about peace at the table. Uh, you know, we're already preparing, my wife and I and Rebecca, and I'm talking about what we're going to eat on Christmas Day. And, and I'm not sure what your Christmas Day is going to look like. But there's nothing like, not just good food at your table, but knowing the peace of God in your heart on Christmas Day. I want to read this morning from Psalm chapter 23, one of the most famous chapters of all the Bible. But uh, Psalm 23 at verse 1, and the Word of God says this, The Lord is my shepherd. 
I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green and meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Here's our focus. You prepare a feast or a, your translation may use the word table. You prepare a feast or a table for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord I'm so grateful for Psalm 23 and the big idea in this morning's message. But if you are going to know peace in your heart at the table, you must have the anointing of God upon your head. I want to say that again. There's no such thing as peace at the table without anointing on top of your head. I I want to go back in time. We're going to look at at Psalm 23 for a few moments. Sit. What Psalm 23 actually is, it's a snapshot of a picture of a shepherd and a flock during a 12-month cycle. We're given some insight into what a shepherd goes through, what a, a flock of sheep goes through during a 12-month cycle. And uh, it begins, of course, in Psalm 23, uh, the shepherd begins in the, the home ranch, the, the home area. Psalm 23, 1, the Lord's my shepherd, I shall lack nothing. I have everything that I need. And so it begins with the sheep and the, at the ranch. And, but every year, a shepherd will take his flock and they go on a long journey. They leave the low lying area and they begin to make their long journey to the mountain area and they begin their ascent up into the high places. Let me stop there for a second. If you are a follower of Jesus, If Jesus is your savior, you say only one is your savior, can Jesus be your shepherd? But as a believer, a follower of Christ, you are called by God to walk with him up into the high places. God's destined us for great things. So we're not going in a downward spiral. We're going higher and higher and higher. So uh, the psalmist talks about that they take this long journey and, and they take, it's a long, difficult journey. Uh, they, they, it's a, a, a year, uh, they, they walk up to the mountain range and there's, uh, there's wild animals, there's, there's rough terrain, there's danger of injury. Uh, not, every, not every sheep survives the journey. Uh, there are adversaries, there's danger. It's a long, difficult journey, but they're not alone. The shepherd leads and guides them. But what happens is this, it's often during the summer of the year, after months of a long journey, uh, they're making their way up into the high areas uh, looking for fresh water. And as they go higher up the mountains, they reach an area, even the mountains, that's known as the tablelands. It's flat areas of land in the higher elevation that puts a different light on Psalm 23 where it says to us, how God prepares a table for us, the presence of our enemies. So imagine this, as he set this up, the shepherd takes him a long journey. Uh, they're exhausted. They've been walking for months and uh, living for Christ. It's a journey and there are good days. There are tough days and there are tough years. So now in the summer season, they're up higher, but they're exhausted. But they've reached the tablelands. They've reached the flat ground, the tablelands. And there, the table lands, it's higher up. The water runs crisp, clear, and cool. The grass is green, it's lush. The sheep can graze and wander. But many times they just sit and they rest. And they relax and they enjoy the provision of God. The table lands, God's provided a feast for them to enjoy. The feast of the lush grass and, the, and drinking that fresh, cold water. But it's also during that summer season. In shepherd's terms, it's known as summertime is fly time. Bible tells us in Psalm 23, 5, 
The Lord doesn't only prepare a table, but he anoints our head with oil. And that's our focus. Why is it critical for the sheep? Why is it critical for you and I that during this season that we know the power of the anointing of the Holy Spirit? Why does the shepherd anoint their head with oil? Uh, well, I want to give you a picture. Uh, the, the sheep are sitting down and, and uh, they're relaxed and, and they're just getting their strength back and catching their breath. And, and, uh, but there's some attacks upon the sheep in the tablelands. And the reason the shepherds anoint them with oil, three simple things. Because of flies, because of fungus, and because of friction. Let's look at the first one. What is it about flies? Uh, you know what? I've never enjoyed flies and insects and uh, mosquitoes or whatever. If you like mosquitoes, you might need extra prayer this morning. But, but uh, I'm not, you know, flies can be rather irritating. And there are all kinds of flies. There are, 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 are uh, warble flies, heel flies. There are deer flies. There are black flies. There are gnats, mosquitoes. Listen, for a shepherd in the summer season, a shepherd is always at high alert. Because flies would like to attack the head of the sheep. And what happens is, and for a shepherd, there's all the different kind of flies that I mentioned and many more. But it's one fly that sheep and shepherds fear more than any other. It's called the nasal fly. Look, I know it's the morning. You have, maybe you're eating a bowl of cereal right now and you might want to put it down. It's going to get gross for about maybe 30 seconds. A nasal fly attacks the head of a sheep. And what it does is it likes the nose area because of the moisture. I told you, a gross shop. But what the fly does is it wants to get upside the head of the sheep or the lamb. And, and shepherds will tell you that during the summer season, the summer season, and uh, 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 that the flies attack, and the, there's all the delicious, the grass and the, the cold water. But the, those flies can irritate, and actually some sheep, will be so irritated that the fly gets up inside their head and causes such inflammation and irritation that some sheep will literally beat themselves to death on a rock uh, trying to get that, that, that fly out of their nose. And some sheep have literally killed themselves. Uh, well, Grant, what is your point? My point is this. What a shepherd does is a shepherd will take oil and smear it all over the head of the sheep. And the presence of the anointing of the oil keeps the flies from getting inside the head of that sheep. The presence of the oil also, it brings healing and relief from the irritation. Well, what is my point for you this morning? This Christmas season, Jesus wants you to know the peace that can pass all understanding. But some say, Greg, you know, wait a minute, Greg, listen, a pandemic and all these things, and uh, Greg, I don't have peace. Listen, according to Psalm 23, conditions do not need to be perfect for you to know the peace of God. It isn't what's around you, it's who lives inside of you that brings peace. And so uh, the, uh, those that say, well, I just want to get over Christmas and I, that's whatever, I, don't, I, I won't know any peace Listen, God is the Prince of Peace. And like those sheep in Psalm 23, uh, the fools in the table, the table spread, and, and, and you can enjoy the, the, the provision even in the presence of your enemies. So what am I saying? I'm saying like the sheep, those flies want access to the head of the sheep. Satan does this. He says, if I can't stop you from making Christ your Savior, I'll send my, my flies to attack you. And I'm talking to a believer right now and you're lacking peace and joy because something has gotten up inside your head that God never wanted ever inside your head. Uh, there's somebody flies and you might say, Greg, is it Bible? Yes, it is. One of the names of Satan is Beelzebub. And that name means Lord of the flies. I'm talking to numbers of people right now. You've been attacked by Beelzebub and his boys. Flies have assaulted you to rob you of peace and joy and rest. But I got great news, man. The Prince of Peace is walking your direction right now to anoint 
your head with oil to tell those lies. You're no longer welcome in this house. Let's identify some of the flies. There are so many, but some prominent flies the devil sends to attack believers to rob them of their joy. Uh, one uh, fly is the fly of depression. And maybe there's somebody watching right now and you've been attacked by spirit of depression. And we're seeing this like never before uh, during this 2020. I heard just a few weeks ago of an 11-year-old boy so distraught, so depressed, he took his own life on a Zoom call in, a, in, his, in his school online classes. I, I'm not talking about having a bad day or whatever. I'm talking depression that wants to grind you up into a million pieces. The psalmist said like this, Psalm 69 verse 1 says this, Save me, O God, for the floodwaters are up to my neck. Deeper and deeper I sink into the mire. I can't find a foothold. I'm in deep water and the floods overwhelm me. I'm exhausted from crying for help. My throat is parched. My eyes are swollen with weeping, waiting for my God to help me. Maybe that's you. Maybe that describes you. You feel like you're overwhelmed. But the same psalmist wrote that I, I, that God heard my cry and then lifted me out of the Maori clay. Uh, this morning, I come against every fly of depression. The Bible says, put on the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. If you're battling depression, my prayers this morning in the name of Jesus, that you sense and know the power of the anointing of the spirit of God and that the spirit of but the depression is broken in your life. Number two, not only is the, the fly of the depression, what about those flies of disappointments? John 5, 6, and 7 says this. When Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, would you like to get well? I can, sir, the sick man said, for I have no one to put me in the pool when the water bubbles up. Someone else always gets there ahead of me. Imagine that man in John 5, there in the pool for 30, some 38 years. And when Jesus arrives and says, hey buddy, you want to get well? And his response is, it's, it's never me. It's always somebody else. Who am I talking to right now this morning? It's Christmas season. And Satan has stolen your peace. Because of disappointments, things haven't happened the way that you thought. Maybe it's the loss of a loved one or uh, difficulties this year, loss of a job or whatever. Maybe there's something years ago, something happened and, and you've allowed that to mark your life. It, it was so profound. The disappointment was real. The disappointment says, I want to paralyze you. And, and there's many great folks that love Jesus who are being held hostage by disappointments, things that happen. You, you, you never saw it coming, but, but it happened. But the Bible tells us the rain falls of the just and the unjust. Jesus said in John 16, 33, in this world, you're going to have trouble, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So for you, it may not be depression. And maybe Greg got uh, disappointed and things haven't happened the way I, I thought. This morning, I challenge you. Let go of that thing this morning. Give it to Jesus and say, God, your ways are not my ways. Your, your, uh, your ways and thoughts are high as the heavens over the earth are your ways and thoughts over my. Trust Jesus with those things in life that you can't figure out. Don't let that fly of disappointment rob you of another second of the peace that only Jesus Christ can bring. There's disappointment, there's, there's depression, there's one more fly that's so prominent. That is a fly of bitterness. Maybe there's somebody watching. You say, Greg, I'm here this morning and I just, I'm watching and Greg, I'm so angry, I'm so bitter. Uh, it says in Hebrews 12, 15, Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. Romans 8, 6 says, so letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. 
I love Isaiah 26, verse 3. You'll keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all who, whose thoughts are fixed on you. Listen, those flies attack your mind. The battle's always up here. The battle for peace is always up here. And so the Bible says, he anoints my head with oil. And so when you let the Lord Jesus, your shepherd, give you a fresh touch of spirit to it. Listen, the present can be broken. Disappointments can be wafted away with, with the goodness of God and a renewed sense that God is bigger and God's faithful and God will bring you through. And also a sense that Jesus can break the back of a bitter spirit. It says again, be careful that, that no root of bitterness grows up in you. And now sinful, that, that kind of thinking that's controlled by sin, it leads to death. Don't let that fly of bitterness rob you of the peace that God has for you. My Bible says in James, what's life but a vapor? It sure does God. Why waste another second? Being bitter and angry, why not give it to the one that died on the cross, that took the suffering, the beatings, and shed his blood for your sins and mine? Listen, we could go on this morning until Christmas and throughout the new year. Of different flies that attack God's people. Who am I talking to this morning? He said, Greg, listen, it's Christmas season, but something has gotten inside my head. And I, I can't shake it. I, I can't shake this. I, I, I want peace. I want, I, I want a good Christmas. I want God to. And this isn't even about us having a good Christmas. How shallow and selfish. Let's be a blessing this Christmas. Well, let's not get angry and bitter. And let's walk with grace and love. Let's let God use us in this season to share the peace that only Jesus Christ can bring. But I can promise you this. No matter who you are, no matter where you're watching this morning, GT, to others that be watching around the world, God's saying to you, let me anoint your head with oil. And it is the power of the anointing of the Spirit of God upon your head that will defeat the power of Beelzebub in his voice. I speak to every person listening and watching that says, Greg, it's... It's fear, it's loneliness, it's, it's, it's resentment, it's low self-esteem, it's a, a fly of suicide that says just, just end it, just end it. I rebuke every foul demonic fly. And I pray the touch of God to flow like a river through your life right now. Listen, even this season, you get all the peace that passes all understanding. So number one, the reason that the shepherd anoints the head of the sheep with oil. It is the defeat and bring healing over the presence of the flies. So this morning, in Jesus' name, we speak to every fly to leave in the name of Jesus Christ. I love Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. Paul says there in the jail of Philippi, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Is it no wonder that Satan sends those flies? He wants to rob you of the peace the only God has for you. So the oil brings victory over the flies, but the oil is also for the fungus. Hey, Greg, what are you saying? Shepherds actually call it scab time. And uh, it's what happens is, you know, sheep are uh, love to, of course, they, they flock together so close, some wander, some strays, whatever. But, but this scab time or this fungus, it's a, among sheep and shepherds, it's highly contagious and an irritating disease that's common among sheep all over. And um, it, how, how does it spread? How does it, we're hearing, you know, social distancing. Sheep do not know how to social distance. And so what happens is in a flock of sheep, how, how, do, they, how do they contract this, this disease, uh, which is called the scab or we'll call it fungus? Well, well, let me tell you what sheep do not do. 
Sheep, sheep don't shake hands because they don't have hands. But what sheep do is, is that when they're mingling together, they touch each other's head. Bah, bah. And, and come on, that's a sick sheep, but come on, it's early. But it's a matter of fact, if you're watching right now, I want you to type bah, bah uh, in, in the chat line right now. Type it in if you're listening. Give me a bah. And what, what sheep do is, is they, they put, they don't shake hands and bah. They put, they, they, they touch each other's heads. And that's how the disease spreads. It spreads, it's highly contagious. It goes from one to the other. It can wipe out entire flocks of sheep. What the oil does, the oil brings healing and protects each sheep from this fungus. It says it in 2 Corinthians 6, 14. It says, don't team up. Brothers and sisters, don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? And what Paul's saying is, is don't team up and don't be yoked together. What that literally means is, don't put your head close for those who are living in darkness. And, and say, Greg, well, as a believer, you know, okay, I get the sheep. I, I, I get this, the sheep, bah, bah, and they, they touch heads and, and they get this scab or fungus on their head. And, uh, but how does this, where does this affect me? Do you know how many believers this Christmas? Some watching right now, they've got all the lights they got, but they've got no peace. They've got the gifts, they got the food, they got the lights, but no peace. There's no such peace. Will we become friends of the world? Will we begin to live wrong and compromise and walk in sin? My friend, we forfeit the peace the only Jesus can bring. Well, for sheep, they can track this disease uh, by, by contact. How does a believer contract this thing? How do we get that spiritual fungus in our heads or our minds? It can happen through media. It can happen again through internet or by friends or family. It's simply uh, Satan's always looking for you and I to get our heads where God never wanted our heads to ever, ever go. Satan's out to steal and kill and destroy. Bible tell, remember Demas was a co-laborer of Paul? Uh, saw miracles, saw signs and wonders and heard incredible teaching. But Paul says, Demas has forsaken me because he loved the things of the world. Let me paraphrase. Demas blew it because he put his head in the wrong place. You show me a believer that compromises and uh, you can, you know, you can you know, just whatever. Say, Greg, well, I'll make my, I'll live the way I choose her. I'll serve God according to my terms. Nobody can do that. No one serves Jesus according to their own plans. But we must all take up our cross and follow after Jesus. And so this fungus says we compromise and, and whatever. But Second Corinthians tells us, don't team up with those who believe. Philippians 4, 8 says this. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, Paul wrote. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. So listen, Paul wants you to know peace this Christmas and after Christmas in 2021. Don't let the devil steal your peace. Live pure, live holy, live righteous in Christ. And Paul says it. He says, fix your thoughts. Remember the battle? He anoints our head. The battle's always between our ears. So the Lord, I want to anoint your head with oil. The oil brings protection. The oil brings that protection. And when a, when a flock is attacked by this fungus, what shepherds do is they'll smear oil all over the heads of all the sheep. They actually, actually have huge dipping tanks. Well, some flocks that get so bad, they have to immerse the sheep in its entirety into a dipping tank so that the fungus will be healed and will bring protection to the other sheep. So who am I talking to this morning? And say, Greg, I, 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 I just, I've slowly drifted. 
Greg, I'm doing things now. I'm going places. I'm looking at things that I, I don't, don't please God. Don't let the devil rob you of your peace. Don't let Satan come in and let that spiritual fungus of the world that get all over you. But walk in the light as he is in the light. Confess your sins and, and the blood of Jesus can wash you and set you free. And so we, we lose our peace when uh, this fungus and through compromise and, and secret sin. In Philippians 2, 5 says this, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. One translation says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. You must. Greg, I, Greg, I want peace. Greg, I want to walk. Then you must have the same attitude as Jesus who is the Prince of Peace. So Greg, what do, you, what do you tell somebody listening this morning at GT or maybe watching wherever? What do you tell somebody that says, Greg, I've blown it, I've sinned. Greg, I let down my guard. I begin to drift from God's word. I begin to, I've never met one maturing believer that didn't have a daily commitment to God's word. I've never met one victorious Christian that can walk in victory without a daily commitment to Jesus in his word and prayer. We can't do this in our own strength. Oh, we need the power of scripture and the power of the word and the power of the spirit to guide us and to protect us and to strengthen us. But if you're in the room and say, Greg, well, you know what? Greg, there's sin in my life. I've, I've, I've compromised, I've let down my guard, and I'm doing, I, I've blown my witness. What do you tell somebody this morning that's watching that says, Greg, uh, there's sin in my life. Here's my word to you. I'm not minimizing your sin, but I magnify the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. That sin, sin destroys, sin kills. The soul of sin shall die. Wage of sin still death, yes, but there's still power in the blood of Jesus Christ. No matter, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, Jesus Christ died upon that cross, shed his blood. You confess your sin. You bring it to Christ right now. You can know forgiveness and peace. Don't you want that peace back again, man? Uh, we all know folks, some, some family members, don't we? And, and they're miserable. Uh, they fight against God like, like, like Paul. The Lord said to Paul, why are you kicking against me? Maybe you know family, they're kicking against God and they're, they're angry. They're fighting the one that wants to forgive them and give them peace. I'm not asking you, I'm begging you to say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I repent from my sin. I get out of the dark, all the secrets, get it out of the closets and bring it into the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you confess your sin, the Bible says, he is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Psalm 23, 5, he prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. What that means is conditions do not need to be perfect to enjoy the table of the Lord. You can enjoy a Christmas even in a, in a crazy year that we've had and yet the peace of God can be all over you and your family and joy because Jesus is anointing. He gives victory over the flies and Jesus gives victory over the fungus. So my prayer, if you have fallen away, and again, the Bible tells us, Paul said to Timothy, look at there's many in the last days, they're, they're gonna depart from the faith. They're going to give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. And, and Paul said something that was so, so sobering to me, and it's been on my mind a lot lately, that the day's coming, it's here now, but nothing is sacred. We're, we're nothing sacred. And, and we're living in the world where many have drifted. Don't you be that person. No, no, no not you. you. You're not going to drift. God wants peace for you. So in the name of Jesus, this Christmas, like right now, like right now this morning, May you know a fresh touch of the power of the Holy Spirit. And may you know the peace of God that passes all understanding. 
May his blood, the blood washes and forgives your sin, but his anointing that keeps us and strengthens us. We need his touch. Listen, how do I get, listen, we contract the virus by putting your head in the wrong place and, and bah, we get that, that we compromise. Listen, let's get our head back in the Bible. Get your head back inside God's world. Let's get our head back in prayer. Let's get our head back seeking the face of God together and you watch God bring peace like you've never known before. Last thing is this, the reason that the shepherd in Psalm 23, it says he anoints my head with oil. Uh, not just to bring healing and protection from the flies. Not just so Belzebub and his boys are broken, their power. When you're anointed by the spirit, those flies, they'll buzz all around you. But the anointing says you have no longer access into that vessel. The anointing makes the difference. That anointing, it protects us and heals us from the, from the fungus and protects us from the sin. We're in the world, but not of the world. Sin's all around us. But, but because of the anointing in God's presence in his word, we, walk, we can walk holy and righteous because he anoints our head with oil. But one last reason, the shepherd anoints the head with oil. That, that the sheep and the shepherd, it's a long journey, a 12-month journey. They leave the ranks. They go up to the high places, and they go back down. But listen, and now when it talks about the anointing, it's also because of friction. And after summer, after summer, okay, the flies anointing uh, brings healing. Uh, the, the, the fungus it brings healing and strength. And we want, but the purpose of the anointing is that it helps with the friction. Now, what does that mean, the friction? Well, once summer ends, it's kind of like here. I'm from New England. Robin's from Maine. Maine has winter 13 months out of the year, by the way. And uh, we just were up in Maine recently where my in-laws live. My mother-in-law is a wonderful, wonderful woman. And, uh, and, um, but, you know, Maine, at the end of summer, oftentimes early August, come on, the days get chilly, the nights get chilly. And what happens, we see it in Pennsylvania as well, like late August, September, October for sure. You know those mornings, those mornings you wake up and you walk out and there's a chill? And then night, whatever. Well, listen, among, among shepherds, that's known as the season of rut, the rut where the, the male sheep, uh, where the rams are looking at the youth, the girl sheep, and they're, they're checking them out and they're and, uh, looking for their, their, who's going to be my wife. And, and uh, it, it's the season of the rut. And what happens in flocks, what happens is the male sheep, they begin to fight each other. Uh, they'll see you. Uh, I remember when I, when, I, when I first met Robin at Valley Forge um, uh, back, back a number of years ago. She was singing in chapel. I'm sitting in chapel. And, uh, and, and all of a sudden I saw Robin singing. And, and I, I, I saw she was a beautiful girl. Is it a beautiful girl? And heard her singing. I just went, hallelujah. And uh, that's not what sheep do. What, what sheep do, it, normally it may sound like this. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, but when they see a female sheep, it goes from ba, 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 ba. I, I just, be, can I be real with you? Uh, when I saw Robin for the first time at school, and uh, my, my, it began like this, ba, 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 hallelujah, ba, hallelujah. And now what happens is uh, the rams begin to fight over the girls. There's friction. And the friction attacks the entire flock. There's no rest, there's no peace, and, and a fighting affects the entire flock. Bible tells us in, in James 4.1, what is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Uh, didn't, don't they come from the evil desires at war with you? Proverbs 26.21 says, a quarrelsome person starts fights as easily as hot embers light charcoal, or, 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 or fire lights wood. Listen, the purpose of the anointing, he anoints my head with oil, power over the flies, power over the fungus, and power over friction. What shepherds do is, when the male sheep, the rams begin to fight, the shepherd will take big portions of the oil and smear it all over the face and the horns of, of, of the lamb, of the rams. And, and uh, what happens is when they go to fight, that they hit each other, but the oil causes them to kind of slip right off each other. Where they used to kind of hit and they make loud noises and sometimes they'd maim each other or some would be killed. But the presence of the oil would cause them to begin fighting. But one shepherd said it was almost comical. 
They watched two rams that were always fighting. He smeared oil all over their head, he wrote. He watched them. He said it was almost comical. They kept trying to hit each other, but the oil, they kept on sliding off each other. They finally realized this isn't going to work. Why don't we just stop fighting? Let me say this. Nothing can rob a family, a nation, a church of peace like lack of unity. Satan loves nothing more to bring unrest in friction, in fighting, in all these quarrels, all these things. And James says, what is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires that war within you? The Bible tells us, the Bible takes serious friction in fighting among God's people. But in fact, Paul said, you're to mark those who cause discord among you. You're to mark them. And so God takes unity seriously. But in fact, when there's unity, Bible says in the scriptures that when there's unity, how God commands a blessing upon the house. That's how much God loves unity. And so because God loves unity, we're not surprised that Satan wants to bring disunity, unrest and friction and fighting. As long as we're fighting each other and talking uh, each other and, and this year on social media, the, the fighting and, and the things and, uh, that doesn't honor God at all. It robs folks of peace. It robs you and I of peace. So what does God do? He says, let me anoint your head with oil. And the presence of the oil will bring that sense of peace where God brings unity back to the flock. I'm not sure about your family, your marriage, but I can promise you this. You'll have peace around the table this Christmas if there's not fighting in your home, but laughter. And I pray God brings laughter back to somebody's home this Christmas. I'm, I'm not talking a giggle. I'm talking a belly laugh. I'm talking, I pray the joy of the Lord comes like a tsunami to you and your family. That peace and joy and laughter and a sense of oneness. Yes, uh, there's things, there's issues, all these things, but that we have a higher calling that we're to make every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit and the bonds of peace. We're to make every effort to walk in unity, church, and to walk in peace. And my prayer for you, for myself, for GT, for everybody watching, is that this Christmas, you would know the peace that passes all understanding. That's what the shepherd says. It It says in Psalm 23, he anoints my head with oil. You know, just we'll close in the second here this morning. Don't leave yet. Don't, if you get up and walk away, your computer will explode in your house. So stay right where you are. We were in Florida years ago, and I'm not like a boat guy. We never had a boat. We rented a boat one day, one of those little pontoon boats and down in southern Florida, and we're going through these little bay, look at these nice homes or whatever, and all of a sudden, Robin says, look at that boat with the nice lights on it. It was coming toward us. It was the, it was the boat police. I got pulled over by the boat police. The guy came up alongside of me, and he says, I, I, I just thought it was like I was in a movie. He said, sir, uh, you drive a boat much? And I said, well, actually, sir, I don't. I rented one that had all over the side of the boat, Rose River Marina. And there I was, and I said, is there a problem? He said, well, yeah, there's a problem. He was very nice, very kind, and he said, you, are, you have people so angry at you on the shore. I said, what? He said, you're in the no-wake zone, sir. You've been going too quick. He says, you're causing boats on the dock. Man, they're, they're rocking and the waves are crashing. And so you, you can't see it, but you're, you're, you're living a wake of unrest wherever you go. Listen, don't be, he, gave, he didn't give me a fine, thank God, whatever. Maybe it's because I cried and wept and held on to it. I'm like, I didn't do that. But he gave me a break and said, you want to slow down, be careful. But can I say this? Let's never be the believer that goes through life and we leave chaos in our wake. Don't be that person. Don't be that person in your family that's always the downer, always the negative, always got to, you know, sometimes we'd be good to maybe pray a quick prayer before we post something on social media. But putting things out there sometimes, not realizing the impact it has and the unrest it can cause. And we're rocking people's lives around us and breaking around. God, he wants to anoint your head with oil that when you go, you leave a wake of peace and of joy and of rest and of goodness. My, my prayer for those watching this morning, come on, GT, it's Christmas. Let the Prince of Peace anoint 
your head with oil this morning in this service. Let them, let them cause those flies to begin to fly away right now in peace in your mind and forgiveness of sin and no more fighting, no, no more small thinking, no more small. Be considerate. Let's be considerate and love people and consider them better than ourselves and let's walk with peace even this Christmas. Here's my prayer, twofold. Number one, if you're watching and say, Greg, I, I don't remember ever receiving Jesus as my Savior. The greatest thing that can ever happen to anybody is to unwrap heaven's Christmas gift. That was God's son born in a manger who 33 years later died upon a cross for your sins and mine. What a joy last week up in Massachusetts. I gave a call for salvation and you're sitting off to my right way back was my nephew or rather my, 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 my great, great nephew. My, Sister's grandson had his hands up, 15 years old, accepted Jesus Christ as his savior. The greatest moment in anyone's life is the moment they receive Jesus Christ as their savior. So I wanna ask you, because you can have all the glitter, all the lights, I'm not a killjoy, I'm not, I'm all, I love it, I'm all in. You can have all the stuff, you can have Christ, this all means nothing. But if you've never received Jesus as your savior, I'm not asking, I'm begging you right where you are to say, Jesus, today, I want to receive you as my Savior and as my Lord, as my God. We have all sinned and come short of God's glory. We all need a Savior. And Acts 4, so there's no other name under heaven whereby men and women must be saved. If you've never or can't recall with some degree of clarity, if you can't remember ever saving Jesus, I'm asking to pray this prayer with me right now. Would you pray this prayer? And you that are watching, come, pray this, pray this prayer. Lift both hands up. Come on, you can do that. Come on, lift up both hands right now. Pray this out loud. Dear Jesus, I receive you right now. Come on, out loud. Dear Jesus, I receive you right now as my Savior. I confess all my sin. I believe you died on the cross. You rose up from the dead. You're alive forever. I receive you now as my Savior. Forgive all my sin, come into my heart. Thank you for the gift of everlasting life. Heaven will be my home. Help me to walk with you. Help me to serve you. Help me to never look back, to never go back, but to walk by your side. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul on December 20th, 2020. In your name I pray. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, come on. I want you to type it in. I just gave my heart to Jesus. Let someone know. Man, we care about you as a church. You matter to us. Let somebody know that you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. In the closing prayer, I want to pray, but first I want to read this to you. A great quote. Listen to this. We talk about the anointing, how it brings peace, and we need to fret. We, how do we get anointing? You have to be in the presence of the shepherd. Today, this Christmas, make extra time to be alone in the presence of God. Let him anoint your head with oil, meaning let the Spirit of God just touch your heart, your mind, your thoughts. But Thomas Watson wrote these words when he said, if God is our God, he will give us peace in trouble. When there is a storm without he will make peace within. The world can create trouble and peace, but only God can create peace in trouble. No matter what trouble you're facing, I want to close in a prayer for you. Come on, GT. Let the shepherd anoint your head with oil today. Every day, get alone with Jesus. Fill your heart and your mind with his presence. Father, I lift up GT family right now. Pastor Brian, every, every, this Pastor Scott, this, the whole pastoral staff, Father, the board, elders, every, every member, every attender. I pray your anointing to flow like a river all over GT right now. I speak to flies to be gone in Jesus' name. I come against those pesty flies that want to distract us from the peace you have, from the fungus, God, sin and compromise. I pray your blood, but wash it all away. We want to walk clean. And Lord, the fighting, the friction, I pray for unity and, and peace and rest. I commit GT to you today. And I ask you in the strong name of Jesus, let the peace of God flow 
like a river through GT Church. And to all who are watching, and I thank you for it today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you, GT. Have a blessed and a peace-filled Merry Christmas. Amen. Thanks for joining us for week three of our Simply Peace sermon series. As we continue to ready our hearts to receive the peace and blessings that come with the birth of our Savior, I hope Pastor Greg's message brought you encouragement. We'll be reflecting on his message in our Growing Together segment this Wednesday night at 7 p.m. on our Facebook and YouTube channel. We'll dive further into some of the things that were discussed today and even answer any questions you may have. We've got a lot of things happening here at GT Church for the Christmas season, and we don't want you to miss any of it. You can visit Christmas at GT.com for everything we have going on, including our Jingle Jam today at 2, 4, and 6 p.m. on Facebook and YouTube. You can stay connected with GT Church all week long by following us on social media everywhere at GT Church Online. You can also download our GT Church app. It's a great resource and you can find everything you need there. I hope you have a great rest of your week and we'll see you later today for our Christmas extravaganza big enough for the whole family, Jingle Jam.